Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I wanted to make a video on what I see as, you know, the expanding role of the data engineer in AI and machine learning workloads. As anyone that doesn't have their head under rock is aware, AI and machine learning are transforming really every industry, every company um, by enabling automation and predictive analytics and data-driven decision-making for areas where that traditionally wasn't possible. Um, you know, it's really been democratizing the use of data across organizations. Um, but the effectiveness of these initiatives and you know, the ability to access these tools and the actual results you get out of them hinges on the quality, accessibility, and reliability of data. And that makes state engineering one of the most critical components of AI workloads. Um, and traditionally, data engineering was seen you know, as a more backend function that's focused on building pipelines and ensuring data integrity. But now with the increasing complexity of AI and machine learning applications and their reliance on high quality data, data engineers are now playing a much more strategic role in ML ops and real-time analytics and feature engineering and data security. Um, so I'm going to explore what are those areas that data engineers are starting to take over and starting to build in this modern day and age so you can get an idea of what other data engineers are doing and what kind of skills you might want to have uh, for getting a strategic data engineering job uh, in today's day and age. Uh, so if you like these type of videos, please like and subscribe. But without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is really kind of the evolution of data engineering into AI and ML. Um, so data engineering has started to evolve past the traditional ETL processes that defined it in its early days into more about continuous data operations with things like data, data lakes, having scalable architecture for data storage, processing, um, and not just being reliant on very simple, hey, extract, transform, load this with dedicated tools to support that. Now you're doing things like ELT and streaming pipelines, you know, pipelines that are directly loading that raw data into data lakes and then transforming it on demand for AI applications or streaming processes that where you're doing real time data processing, you know, for AI applications like fraud detection or a personalized recommendation that requires a data pipeline that operates in real time that collects that user information, feeds it into that model tells that model to generate a prediction based on the you know, model's parameters that, hey, is this fraudulent or not? Um, and using tools like Kafka, like Flink um, to, to do so. Uh, and then you also have things like automated data governance, you know, being able to you know, do AI processing at a really large scale. Um, you need to have the ability to you know, observe and monitor and alert on hundreds or thousands or millions of data pipelines at once. And also, you got to make sure all of it complies with all the latest recommendations, which are always changing. So that also brings me into my next topic, which is the new responsibilities of data engineers for AI and ML pipelines. Um, and so you have up here kind of a Venn diagram that shows, you know, really how data engineers work bleeds into the data science, the AI, the ML engineers work, where there's a lot of synergies and there needs to be for both of these teams to get the most out of their data. Um, and there, you, as a data engineer, are really integral to AI success through doing model-centric data engineering, designing your data for models from the core, having scalable MLOps solutions, doing things like feature store management really reliably. Uh, feature engineering especially is a critical step in feature pipelines, or in ML pipelines, um, because you need to take this raw data, figure out what are the most meaningful points of this data, you know, the types of people that are most likely to buy this product, do they all have the same hair? Do they all have the same eyes? Um, and this is where data engineers are really critical in giving you a way to, hey, design, maintain a feature store that gives you a lot of reusable, versioned, and real-time features that are up to date, that are clearly labeled to understand what this value represents. Does it represent someone's IQ? Does it represent their SAT scores? Um, does it represent their blood pressure? Right, And so giving all this information in a really easily searchable, manageable way to AI engineers lets them get more value out of their data quicker. Also, implementing feature pipelines that ensure low latency access to AI models in production. Um, a really common thing I'll see is, you know, data teams that build asynchronous data pipelines that'll say, hey, accept a call from someone uh, with the information they want to get a prediction on, and then it calls that AI model, generates the prediction, and serves it back to the user. Um, also, create feature transformation logic, help design ways that, hey, I can automate the massaging and the transformation of these features to make sure that they're of a good quality for my downstream engineers. Um, also, 
you're gonna to need to look at you know, MLOps and AI model development. And so you're really gonna to wanna to be familiar with the modern MLOps framework because it's kind of your responsibility for building those pipelines for saying, hey, how can I build reliable, repeatable ways to ingest this data, send it in this AI model in production, right? So you're automating the model retraining pipelines, ensuring that you know your model is always using the latest data. Also things like developing drift detection and anomaly detection and implementing alerting mechanisms that will say, hey, this model performance has degraded. Um, and also you know, implementing strategies like containerization um, and scalable cloud infrastructure to scale those AI workflows. Um, another big thing is you know, managing data partitioning, uh, data availability checks, indexing cloud storage, again, making data easy to access and understand, um, and also doing things like implementing vector databases too for you know, breaking down uh, data into its raw numbers, uh, in Mate, which is really easy for machine learning models to understand uh, and ingest and then use for their predictive models. So a lot of times you're gonna wanna take the raw data bring it down into vectors and then ingest that data or give that data to your downstream data scientists. And you're gonna to need to have good documentation of what that is because when they look at their data, it's just gonna be a bunch of numbers um, in a row that represent you know, that Billy had brown hair and blue eyes. So now another thing that's really popular um, is the rise of real-time AI um, and low latency data pipelines, right? Where you're constantly ingesting raw data um, you are processing both batch and real-time data. And here's a simplified kind of pipeline where you're constantly bringing in new data into your Snowflake environment, into your cloud storage, feeding that into your model, reading in new features, so that then, you know, when someone makes a query, you have that data available. And then that query is also that information around, hey, what did this actually match the person's problem? Did it not match their problem? That's also fed back. So it's a constant loop and a constant cycle. And that requires data engineers um, to build the scalable infrastructure because you know, you're used to as a data engineer building those scalable, repeatable pipelines that are running on a constant basis, on a constant schedule. You have to help build that infrastructure because a lot of times you know, the data scientists, they're just working with playing with data. Um, you are the infrastructure expert. You know, a lot of times these companies, you're gonna be the one that's relied on, hey, you know how to pull data out of all these systems. You know how to transform it at scale. Now you need to do it for machine learning. Um, and a lot of the real processes aren't that different. It's just, you know, a different tool you're using or a different place you're executing these queries. Um, you know, really it's just the same as supporting analytics pipelines, which data engineers have really always done. So another thing you want to consider, you know, as a data engineer and as someone in working with ML and AI workloads is the need for people who can understand how to manage these serverless data processing tools and cloud infrastructure, because that's critical for running machine learning workloads. You can't really do it on-prem unless you're a Microsoft or someone that's running your own warehouses. So you as a data engineer are going to need to take your skills that you have from leveraging all these different cloud services, you know, data lakes, databases, uh, asynchronous processing tools, and also the new cloud native ML services. You know, they follow a lot of the same lines that existing services have. Use your skills with understanding how to manage those VMs and all those different tools to start knowing, hey, how do I manage all these different ML and AI tools at scale so I don't end up with bloat, so I don't end up with tools that aren't really used, um, and I actually use all these tools properly. Um, and you know, this is where you're bringing in, you know, if you're on Azure, Delta Lake, Data Lake Storage, you can really, it really requires, this is a great example, you know, over eight services just for a very simple model retraining and serving pipeline. Um, and you know, something where you're also gonna wanna keep your head towards is, you know, more data centric AI. So a lot of things, you know, times people now are saying, hey, I don't even need a human to read this data. I'm going to actually have a, uh, you know, ML model AI agent that's going to read this data, understand it, and then figure out how to prioritize data quality, labeling and augmentation automatically without you needing to figure out how to do that. So taking some of that mental load off the data engineer and putting it more on AI. Um, and then also using AI itself to automate that pipeline monitoring, mon auditing, automating the anomaly detection and performance tuning and having AI agents that you work alongside to automate a lot of those kind of non-differentiated tasks, which really just, hey, read this alert, understand what happened here and you know send this out as a state change somewhere else. Um, so, some key kind of takeaways I would say here is that, you know, data engineers, you're really moving from traditional ETL to more real time, or if not real time, you know, small batch AI data operations. Um, and feature stores and MLOps are 
transforming how AI models interact with data. So understanding that paradigm, how to work with and manage features um, and hundreds of data pipeline, ML pipelines is, is really critical. Um, and then also more event-driven architectures and understanding how to use a new type of vector data that you know I wasn't familiar with two years ago, but now is like the standard for what you need to do to load data into a machine learning model. You have to vectorize it, make it really easy for that machine learning model to consume and get the best results out of it. Um, and then underpinning all of this is cloud and serverless computing, which are starting to enable you know, AI model training inference at large scale for people that don't have that infrastructure on-prem, right? And it's very unrealistic for you too. And you probably don't want it, right? Because it gets out of date and you want to replace it with the latest software. That's what having cloud infrastructure allows you to do is also, where you know, if you want to start 10 x your pipeline growth tomorrow, just toss on more VMs. So that's really you know, kind of all I wanted to talk about today. I hope you learned something in this video. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Data guy out.